Hello again, and uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome back um, to Innovise Water Talks. Uh, happy to be with you all today and uh, going through some SQL queries. Uh, so really getting into some of the nitty gritty in a couple of our products, namely Infox ICM and Info Asset Manager. And I've got a couple uh, excellent folks here with us today to go through um, these topics and kind of pick up where we left off last January here. So without further ado, I'll introduce the folks we have here. Uh, with us today. So, and my name is Tim Duras. I'm a solutions engineer here with Innovise. Been with Innovise for five and a half years, either doing support and technical services or kind of pre sales um, technical support. Um, calling to you all from Colorado uh, today, but here with me today, I've got Idris and uh, Nicole Hawthorne. And uh, Idris, Nikki, would, would, you, would you care to introduce yourselves just very briefly here? Sure. Do you sure. want me to go first, Nikki? Or you go first. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead, Idris. Okay, so I'm Idris Nudri. I'm the solutions engineer uh, for the asset management solutions at Innovise. Uh, I'm based out of the um, sort of European office based in Spain. And over to you, Nikki. Sure, I am uh, Nicole Hathorne. I've um, uh, been with Innovise for uh, gosh, about 11 years now, mostly doing InfoWorks ICM support and a little Info Asset Manager here and there. Um, and I am I'm based in the U.S. over here in Florida. Perfect. Uh, yeah, thanks for being with us here today. Uh, again, for those of you that have been following Water Talks, we did a, a similar kind of SQL query, very focused Water Talk last year with Nathan, and very happy to have Idris in. in, in Nikki here uh, today, picking up kind of where we left off last January. Um, but again, kind of welcome to another year of Water Talks. We're just going to kind of keep it rolling uh, as we did last year, every week, planning on every kind of Tuesday, uh, bring in, uh, you know, everyone, uh, hopefully, you know, more helpful uh, water infrastructure, you know, software and modeling uh, content. So today, again, talking very specifically about SQL queries within primarily Infox ICM and uh, Info Asset Manager. Uh, if you're not too familiar with SQL queries, but you have one of those solutions, um, definitely put in the chat that you'd like to, you know, get a recording of last year's talk. Uh, Nathan and I went through some of the, you know, basics, and we're gonna kind of going to be picking off where we left off last year and, and kind of going a little bit more advanced and things we didn't get to in the hour last year. Um, but as far as you know, upcoming water talks next week, we're going to have kind of another update and where we're at in terms of our asset management platform, uh, Info360 Asset. Following that, uh, we're going to look at uh, modeling in SWIM in Infox ICM and how to convert a model from XP SWIM to Infox ICM, if that's something uh, you're interested in or needing to do. And then as we start February off, we're going to get to some uh, water distribution modeling, specifically looking at InfoWater and InfoWater Pro. How do you work in between those two if you may be in that situation? How to create a model log. Uh, so how to kind of track changes as you might be doing a particular project. And then one of the a control center, which is a really handy new feature in InfoWater Pro, um, where you can see all of your simple and uh, rule-based controls all in one spot. So that'll be with Patrick Moore, and I'm happy to have him back for that one there. Uh, before I go any further, let's see somebody had a couple of questions there. Uh, if you can't hear anything, just please just log out and log back in maybe. Um, and uh, yeah, and again, I guess this is still water talk. So please do, if you have any questions, please uh, do ask those. We are kind of, we, we've got a topic, but we're very uh, open. You've got two kind of SQL query experts here with us today. Uh, and we do want to focus in on your questions. So please do enter those in uh, as they come up. All right, so a little bit of background. We went through a little bit of this last year, but SQL query and then kind of the whole structured query language has been around uh, for quite a while, right? If we're going back to the 1970s, created by IBM, adopted by Oracle, there's been all these kind of different versions of SQL, slightly different uh, languages, uh, kind of spins on the original kind of language, but it's, it's, it's a great way of communicating between um, uh, relational databases. Um, yeah, so there, again, there's many different, uh, it's kind of pervasive across all industries, but there are many different dialects. And so at Innovise, some of our products, Works ICM, Info Asset Manager, have our own kind of uh, SQL query language that shares a lot of similarities to folks that are already kind of 
familiar with one of these other types of SQL queries, um, but there are some specific things we've adjusted to kind of adapt them for hydraulic modeling purposes. Uh, and, you know, lately there's been kind of this move to, you know, no SQL databases and, and, and things like that, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll be focusing mainly on kind of SQL query language uh, within Infox ICM and Info Asset Manager. Uh, just a note, SQL queries are also super useful in uh, InfoWorks WS Pro as well. We won't be going into uh, that hydraulic modeling distribution platform as much in this particular topic, but a lot of the, um, the a lot of the language that uh, Nikki and Idris are going to go through today is still very um, uh, still very relevant to InfoWorks WS Pro. If you maybe are working with that solution as well, but again. Uh, you know, we've had folks here at Invise kind of, you know, we've, we've got software that doesn't use two queries language, and then these software you see on the screen here are, are ones that do, and it's kind of, there's so many different things you can do with two queries. Um, you know, select different items, generate tables, create different reports, um, you know, clean up your data, uh, create and delete objects. Uh, it, it can really add quite a bit of power, but with that power, kind of there's an added level of complexity, right? With some of our solutions, we kind of compare some of our solutions to, um, you know, honestly, kind of like driving a car. Whereas if you, with SQL queries, you've got all these, you know, other kind of adjustments you can make, all these different buttons on kind of your dashboard, all these different commands you can access, a little more like flying an airplane. So it's good to have these uh, webinars with you all where you can share a little bit of how uh, to break down some of that complexity so you can do really powerful things uh, with these tools here. So um, again, uh, please put in the chat or um, put it in the survey at the end if you want a recording of last year's talk, which went through a little bit more of the basics, because uh, we're going to be picking up kind of where we left off from last year, where we, we, I think we primarily, you know, Nathan was doing most of the presentation, and we got through most of the slides, most of the basics, but he had these 13 SQL queries uh, that he created and that uh, Nikki is kind of going to go through within Infox ICM uh, that do very kind of specific uh, actions in terms of your your um, editing your uh, network, your ICM network. And we're going to kind of go through and, and kind of talk through how those work. And then Idris is going to do something very similar with uh, Info Asset Manager. So, uh, and again, for um, if you can see uh, the handout section, in GoToWebinar as well, you might be able to see the handouts. We've got all the slides in there in the PDF, and then there's a Word document that has the text for all these SQL queries that we're going to uh, kind of go through today that Nikki and uh, Idris provided. So these are fully, you know, there for you to just pick up and use if you're using InfoWorks ICM or Info Asset Manager. Uh, you can kind of plug these in uh, because it is a very structured um, database and, and um, you know, everything's pretty set there. Uh, but with that, I am, uh, oh, I've got one more uh, kind of slide here. Uh, again, if you're new to this, again, we're, we're gonna be diving into some of these details, but there are a lot of resources to start with some of the basics of SQL queries. Uh, there's obviously the help file. You know, we've got not only the Word document of today's uh, SQL queries that we're gonna go through, but we have transportable uh, databases, uh, to, so you can just plug these in. Uh, these transportable databases will be in kind of the latest version of InfoWorks ICM and InfoAsset Manager, so you will need to be running kind of 2021.8. Uh, um, I think that's the version you sent over Idris. It's your version 2021.8, is that right? Yes, that's correct, 2021.8.2. Okay. So you will need to be up to date, but I mean, if you, if you even if you're not up to date, you can use a lot of the language that's in those Word documents to and plug those into your own models. Um, again, just some other things maybe that we didn't mention last year. Newer versions of ICM and WS come preloaded with some common SQL query statements. Uh, so it's a great way to help you get started on that. There was a lot of conversation after we did this topic last year about, hey, what other resources are there to help with SQL queries and i uh, happy to report that we, there are uh, quite a few uh, Medium articles out there written by some of our support folks. I was able to easily find one on SQL queries from Mel Mang as part of our support staff. Uh, we also do have a GitHub site um, as well. If, if you search, you know, Innovise Open Source Support, there is a site there that contains not only SQL queries, but also Ruby scripts for 
uh, these same solutions. Uh, again, I've mentioned quite a few times now that previous water talk last year, and I think we've done others last year on SQL queries. Uh, you can always get in touch with support, invite support to uh, request access to those. And then the last thing I wanted to kind of highlight, I'll see. Is the new Innovise Learning Center. So if I, uh, if you're on the Innovise website and you go to News and Resources and you come down to Learning Center here, it'll be brought to uh, kind of our new Learning Center hub, uh, where you can immediately kind of go to uh, kind of the self-serve uh, training portal. If you're a, an, an active Innovise InfoCare customer, you can come here and we've got over 19 hours, almost 20 hours of Innovise free product training available to you here. So uh, you type in the same username and password. I don't know why mine's not auto filling here, but there's uh, a whole bunch of content in here, basic um, tutorials on Infoworks ICM and lots of videos for InfoIsit Manager. We've got even some clips from last year's SQL queries, water talks. Uh, but you can see there are all these different courses here uh, that you can jump into. And this is relatively new, it was in this last year. so. Trying to get the word out, uh, it's a pretty helpful uh, site for those of you not familiar with it. So with that, um, I will change presenter over to you, Nikki, and we'll okay. go from there. All right. Can you see me? My screen? Yep. Yep, we got you. It's That's like coming through nicely. Excellent. Okay, uh, so I have got a set of SQLs um, uh, over here in my master database that have been already created. Um, now, uh, just for warning, uh, the the goal of what of what we're trying to show here is. Um, just kind of a variety of what SQLs can do in InfoWorks ICM um, and sort of the power that they hold and the things that they can do. So um, I'm not going to go through each one like line by line. Um, some of these are quite complex and we just wouldn't have time to go through and like describe what each line of code is doing. Um, but I, I do want to make clear uh, kind of like all the things that are or many of the things that SQLs can do. And then um, as Tim mentioned, uh, we have provided these SQLs for you in a transportable database. So you guys, if, if any of them look like something you would like to try to do within your model, you will have access to those um, SQLs to sort of um, have for yourself and modify as needed. Um, so we're just gonna walk through each of these. So um, this first one, this first SQL, I've already got, now to open an SQL, um, you have to have a network open already. So I've got this network open and I'm just going to double click to open this SQL. And um, what this SQL is going to do is it's going to create a table. So whenever we see the select command before a um, field, um, we know that it's going to create a table with values in this field. Um, specified there. So, um, so it's going to create a, a table that has, um, that lists the link type um, of, um, uh, uh, of links in the model. It's going to count um, the, uh, the, it's going to, it's going to group uh, the, the link types by asset ID. Um, so it's going to give you a count of um, how many links um have the same asset id and then it's going to order them by count so at the top of the table it's going to show you um, the most number of links that have the same asset id and so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find pipes that um that have the same asset id so when i run this query uh, it generated this table and it's showing us that um, and you can see it's ordered by the the highest count at the top um, and if I open this up I can show you when it says order by um, it it select uh, it's specifying the the field that it wants um, ordered and then desc means descending um, so uh, the query wanted to order the table by the count of links so we've got the most links at the top and what this is saying is it's um, 
uh, got seven conduits that have this same asset ID. Um, and so if I were to choose a row down here, we've got two conduits that have this asset ID. Um, so the, the query created a table showing us um, that we do have um, pipes with um, the same asset IDs and you can see um, how many uh, have the same asset ID. Um, so moving on to the next query, um, you can use an SQL to identify when there are disconnected nodes um, or orphan nodes. Um, so uh, what this query is going to do is it's going to clear any selection we might still have in our network, and it's going to select any node that does not have any downstream links and does not have any upstream links. So I do know that in this network there isn't, um, there aren't any orphan nodes currently, but I'm going to go ahead and add one to the network so that you can see this um, query demonstrated. And so we can see right here that I don't have anything selected um, in the network, but if I did, the first command will clear the selection. So I'm going to go ahead and run this query. And when I did that, you see that nothing is selected except for this orphan node, this disconnected node. Um, and that was the, the purpose of the query. So we had one query that created a table for us of information, and then we just used a query where it selected um, something uh, for us based on some criteria that we specified. So those are the first two. And then this next query, the get nearest ground level for mesh zones. I'm going to go ahead and open my urban 2D workspace. And um, I'm going to go ahead and um, I want to I want to see my mesh zones a little better and my 2D zone. I'm just going to make these a little more visible. That's my 2D zone. I can see it appeared back here. Um, and then for my mesh zone, make these this color apply. Okay. All right. So now we can see um, we can see a 2D zone here. And um, if I zoom in, hopefully you can see, maybe I'll make those a little bit darker. My mesh zones, they look like little buildings here. I'm gonna make them a little darker. Okay, um, okay, so uh, this SQL, um, it's a spatial query, so it's going to be um, defining some information for our mesh zones um, based on uh, some information that it's pulling from nearby nodes, nodes that are within 150 um, feet. So uh, what this one does it's, is it's going to, what you can do is select a couple of, you can select a couple mesh zones or all of them. I'm just going to grab a couple of these. Um, Grab like this one. Actually, let's pull it from the table. I've got my go to webinar kind of in the way. Okay, so I'm just going to select um, a couple of the mesh zones from my table here. And you'll notice that the ground level modification uh, for each of these mesh zones is set to raise or lower. Um, and then the level is set to zero. And what this query is going to do is it's going to take uh, my selection of mesh zones and it's going to set the ground level um, modification field to, uh, to be level instead of raise or lower. And then it's going to set the level um, of each mesh zone that I've selected to uh, the ground level of the nearest node within 150 feet plus 20 feet. So it's going to be it's going to be looking at the elevation, uh, the approximate elevation of the mesh zone, uh, because these are buildings and it's going to raise it 20 feet so that it's an actual actual raised above the ground um, building, which um, will help with um, the purposes of 2D modeling and the flow kind of coming, you know, around the buildings because they're set to a higher elevation. So when I go ahead and run 
this query, you're going to notice this column change and this column change. Um, so uh, you'll notice that some of these did not change. So now several of these are set to level and a new um, level has been specified um, for each of these mesh zones. And so for these uh, selected mesh zones that did not uh, change, that just probably means that they were um, not within 150 feet of a node. So there wasn't that information to pull from. So if I were to find that mesh zone um, that didn't get changed in the network and I zoom out, I can easily see that it's pretty far from any node. So that's why it wasn't changed. So that demonstrates one thing about queries is that you can use them to um, sort of take away a lot of your work. So um, what I just did here, it, it the selection of mesh zones that I, it, it changed most of them. It set most of them to the values that I wanted, which saved me a lot of time. And so, but it can't, it, in this case, it couldn't, um, it couldn't help me out with all of them. So, but now I, I, if I were to do this to all of the mesh zones, it would get most of them. And then for the rest of them, I can either increase my um, node distance, um, and, and run it again on the um, on the mesh zones that weren't populated, or I could manually, um, you know, check the elevation um, at these locations and set the the mesh zone um, level to, um, you know, a value more more manually. But either way, the SQL sort of helped me out and reduce the amount of work that I have to do. Um, and so we'll move on to number four. I'm gonna go ahead and revert my changes. And uh, so now I'm gonna open the, this, this network here, the Whitbell Network Subcatchments. And so this next SQL, this is, uh, this is gonna route my subcatchments to the lowest node within a given distance. And in this case, it's 150 feet. And so oftentimes with a 1D model, you, um, you in your GIS, you have um, parcel, lay, uh, parcel polygons or something similar where you've got, um, or land use polygons where you've got subcatchment information that you wanna use in your model. But since GIS is a, you know, it's a spatial, um, based software, so you might not have good like modeling information stored. Um, so in this case, we've imported a bunch of subcatchments, but within the model, uh, the model doesn't know where that subcatchment flow is supposed to go. So oftentimes we import these polygons and then we have to um, figure out a way to assign them to the nodes or the links where they're going to drain. And so this SQL very powerfully um, takes all of the subcatchments that don't have a node ID assigned to them, and it, it's gonna assign them to um, the nearest node within, or I'm sorry, it's gonna look at all the nodes within 150 feet, and it's gonna select the one with the with the lowest invert, and then it's gonna assign, uh, or I'm sorry, the lowest chamber floor, which is basically the invert. Um, and it's gonna assign uh, the subcatchments that don't have a node ID assigned to them, it's gonna assign them with a node. So you'll notice none of these subcatchments have, uh, um, a node assigned. Uh, you, if they did, you would see the little arrow pointing to the to the node. But if I select um, one of these subcatchments, I can see that um, there is no node ID assigned. But when I run this query, it's going to take a second. You'll notice this populate here in just a second once it runs through. Hey, Nikki, as that's running through, one quick question can record for everybody here. Sure. Um, Apple asks, is SQL query capable of doing batch export to shapefile or CSV format? Um, yeah, uh, well, I know that you could do that with Ruby scripting. I don't know that it can be done with SQL. That's right, Nikki. You'd need to yeah. Ruby script to do a batch um, export to, to SQL or, or shape. Um, however, you are able to export any table that you create using a SQL um, to a CSV file. 
so the table I created here, yep, um, this could be exported. That. That's correct. Okay. And there, I'm just thinking there are plenty of ways just within the software you can export out, you know, everything to a shape file without SQL queries. There's, there's a button for it. Uh, a lot of different export right. options as that's well. That's true. Um, yeah. But... Yeah, that's true. You can see if I right click on a network, mm -hmm. I can export everything from this network to any of these formats. Um, okay, so I just Perfect. ran this, and um, I it, now you can see the arrows because now the the nodes were defined for each subcatchment. Um, so that's kind of a quick way to do that because that is something that um, that's one of those things that's that can be done often um, when importing subcatchments that don't have a place for the flow to go. Um, all right, so this next one we're going to open the. Greenville 2D network. Okay, so this next query, um, so we just looked at routing subcatchments to a, uh, a nearby node, and this next query is going to reroute subcatchments to a 2D point source. So for um, uh, for 1D models, you, you want your runoff to be directed to your manholes. But for 2D modeling, um, when you get a little bit more specific, you may not want the subcatchment runoff to go directly to the nodes. You might want it to be routed to the mesh near the node, um, where it can then enter the node in more of like more like an inlet or a gully where there's like a head discharge relationship um, between uh, the flow uh, near the node um, into the node, um, so instead of the, all that runoff just going directly into the manhole. And so um, in newer versions of ICM, we have made that possible with, the, with a 2D point source uh, type of object. Um, so typically what's done is you would put, um, uh, see this, this subcatchment here, you can see there's a subcatchment, hopefully you can kind of see a green arrow going directly to this node here. Um, and so with the 2D point source, you would add a 2D point somewhere near this node, and then you would need to redirect the subcatchment um, to the 2D point source, and then all the flow from the subcatchment goes to the 2D point source, is now on this mesh, and then it can enter this um, this node um, again, more in like a head discharge relationship type of way. But there's a lot of 2D nodes here and a lot of subcatchments, and so that can be that could be a bit tedious. Um, but this SQL um, will now create a 2D point source for you, um, and then it will uh, modify the subcatchment to now uh, reroute its flow to the 2D point source. Um, so you'll notice here, if I select this subcatchment, it is currently draining to a node. It's draining to this, this nearby node here. Um, and there are no, if I open up my points table, I can see that there are no 2D, oh, did I already run this one? There shouldn't be any 2D points. Sorry, I was practicing and it looks like I forgot to figure this. Let me delete all these. Quick delete. Okay. Right, so you can see now we have no 2D point sources. And if I, so if I run this query, Do we have any more questions, Tim, while we're letting this run? Yeah, one question here from Kevin. Um, is there a way to sample the ground model or other raster at a given location other than through the inference for nodes with missing ground level data? Is there another, maybe another way through SQL queries that is out there? Um. <clears throat> I don't think SQL queries interact with um, a Ground DTM model. or a, yeah, a digital elevation or digital terrain model. I think okay. you're right. So, I've never seen so that. The best way would be the inference through yeah, the, the built-in inference option, I'm, I'm thinking. 
Sure, and that will infer your ground levels, I believe. Cool. And then you could probably, I mean, if you needed to, I just think that there are plenty of examples of some of our other solutions, InfoWater, where it's like you, you infer the ground level, but then you have to adjust for the actual elevation of the pump. You could then use a SQL to, or, or just go into the database to manually adjust or something once you have a starting point, kind of. Um, yeah. I must have done something to my, uh, when I was practicing, I must have done something to this. Cause, okay, so the, the 2D point sources um, were created using the query. Um, and then let's just make sure that this catchment is draining to it like it was supposed to. Yeah, it didn't, I must have done something to it. Sorry guys, let me see if I can. Well, I'm gonna move on cause I, I don't wanna take up too much time, but, uh, that query does, um, I, I, I must have messed something up, but it does create one of those 2D, 2D I, it worked when I was practicing anyway, where it creates a 2D point source um, near each 2D manhole, and then it routes the subcatchment flow um, to that 2D point source. Um, so then um, this next query, it, it generates um, dual drainage overland links. So, um, so with 1D networks, um, uh, uh, especially with combined systems, you have your underground sanitary network. And then um, if you're not modeling 2D um, uh, in certain areas, maybe it's not worth modeling all of that detail, but you do wanna include some of the overland flow um, that's coming in from the above ground streets. Um, well, again, that can be tedious to add sort of a, another road link um, on top of all of your combined system links that are underground. Um, and then also if you're adding overland links, you want your you want all of your nodes to be inlet nodes because those are the ones that interact well with overland flow. Um, so uh, what this query does is it's gonna take all of your, um, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna, you can create a selection um, of links and then generate overland um, uh, links, uh, basically on top of the ones that you've selected. Um, and then it's also gonna turn your the connected nodes into. Right now, the flood type is lost. It's gonna change these into um, inlet nodes. So uh, right now, we just have underground. We have these combined system links um, that are underground. And when I run this query, it's gonna take all the links that were selected and it's gonna add an overland link, which was um, what happened here. Um, so go ahead and look at that. And it gives it a shape. Um, so in the query, it's specified um, that it's gonna give, where is it? Um, it's gonna turn the nodes into inlets um, that are connected to those pipes, and then it's going to give the um, um, every overland link. It's going to give it this auric shape with a width of 500 inches and a height of 10 inches. And so we can see that this this overland link has the shape of auric, which is kind of like a it's like kind of like a rectangle, like an open channel road. Um, and then it's got a width of 500 inches and a height of 10 inches. And, and once you create these, you can modify them um, in the tables, but the SQL is great for just generating them in the first place. And then you can modify them um, if you need to based on the size of the, of the roads, um, depending on the size of the road. So, um, so that's what that one does, which is really powerful. And then um, we're gonna skip seven and go on to number eight and then, um, so what this one does, I'm gonna open the Watertown sewer network. And um, I can see that uh, this network has sort of a set of scenarios created in it. Um, and what this scenario creation SQL is gonna do is it's gonna create a, a couple new scenarios. It's like we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven new scenarios. And it's gonna take a selection of links. I've already got a selection here. You can see there's some 
uh, pipes selected here. And what it's going to do is this, uh, this query is going to create one scenario for each of these pipe diameters. Um, so it's going to create like seven new scenarios. And in each of the scenarios, it's going to upsize this select selection of pipes to, to these diameters. So if I go ahead and run this, I'll now find that I've got these new scenarios. Um, and if I click on, for example, let's, well, let's switch to size 24. I can see that each of these pipes now has 24 inch diameter. Go back to 20. It now has 20 inch diameter. So that's sort of a quick, if you've got, you know, a, a set of simple um, scenarios that you'd like to create, um, that's a good um, query for that. And then I'll go real quick through these. I'll not talk so much, um, but the, um, I'm going to open my river editing network here. And um, you'll notice, uh, you'll notice that this river is very um, choppy, uh, the slope of it. Um, this can really mess with your, uh, the stability um, uh, when uh, running river models. And so we have a query here where if I just run this query, it's gonna smooth out uh, this riverbed. So just watch it smooth out here. It's only gonna take a second. See how it smoothed it out. So that'll really help with um, river stability. And then we have an another query. So this is the um, this is the river reach slope. Um, but you also have cross sections within each river reach um, that uh, wherever there's a sharp change in slope, it really helps to have panel markers to improve model uh, accuracy and stability. But opening up every single river reach and then modifying every single cross section to include panel markers um, would be really tedious, especially in a model any bigger than this one with, you know, just a kind of a small set of river sections. So this query is going to add panel markers to your section. So when I drag this out, it's going to ask me what is the max change in slope in my rivers in my cross sections. And I'm just going to say 10%. And when I do that, it it creates this oh, I forgot to select everything. Here we go. It also works on a selection, which is what I forgot to do. So it generates this table. And the table is going to show, when it pops up here in a second, it's going to show each river reach. It's going to show, it shows how many um, panels, panel markers were added to each river reach. Um, it tells us how many total uh, cross sections there were, and now how many, after adding the panels, how many uh, uh, panels per section there are. So you could have queries that do things. Um, modify things, but also then create a table to show you what exactly it did. And I could easily, I'm not going to for time's sake, but I could easily check each of these river sections and just make sure that the panels um, were added as this table indicates. And that's all, Tim, for me. Perfect. Thanks, Nikki. As we transition over sure. to Idris here, I'll change presenter. Uh, I think there's a good transition question in here. And then one other, sure. there were a couple, first, I guess there were a couple that, you know, Nikki didn't show. Please reach out to support at Innovise.com or give us a call if you'd like kind of more uh, insight on those ones. We should have the SQL queries in Word there. Uh, but then the that kind of nice transition questions from Mike. Uh, given the power of SQL validation, is it possible to use SQL, InfoWorks SQL or Info Asset Manager SQL um, to validate the data? Um, in our GIS. If we export our GIS directly to InfoWorks, can we run SQL queries and then import the results back to GIS without manually changing every value? Uh, so it kind of depends. I think it depends on the type of SQL. So if you generate a table, um, the table really can't, I can't see how you would really use it, I guess. Uh, in ArcGIS, but if I used a query to like modify something, like add overland links, uh, change the diameter of pipes, stuff like that, then you could export uh, those overland links easily from InfoWorks to import those into GIS, if that makes sense. 
I'm thinking with Idris, you you know best, but you know, going a step beyond that too with a Ruby script, you could not only create you know an edited version of your JS, but you could actually kind of merge changes. I believe using a Ruby script, you could you know bring in JS yeah, to a workgroup product, run a SQL to correct everything, clean everything up. There's also validation and inference tools, and then you could even use a Ruby script to automatically on a, on a timed basis export that out to gis and maybe even merge changes with your gis um mm -hmm. i know we definitely have some utilities here in the us that um you know i mean that, that was one of info asset managers first functions right it was just cleaning up hydraulic modeling data um so mm -hmm. it's definitely a powerful tool for for doing some of that very good They just go for it. Some, Over uh, to me. In class. All right. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Nikki. That was great. Okay. So, um, as I mentioned, I'm Idris. I'm the asset management uh, specialist. So, the queries that I'm going to be running are in Info Asset Manager. And for those of you not familiar with Info Asset Manager, it's part of the um, Innovise Work Group client. The Innovise Work Group client actually consists of Info Asset Manager and InfoWorks ICM and ICM Live. So when you install it, um, you're actually installing all three products. They all work off the same database. Um, so what I'm looking at here is Info Asset Manager, and I've got my database, and we can see the database contents. And side by side, I also have InfoWorks ICM, which I'm going to bring up now. So InfoWorks ICM, I'm running this in conjunction um, with Info Asset Manager, and we can see this at the top. So depending on your licensing, you can run InfoWorks ICM, which will always give you a an, an Info Asset Manager viewer. Um, that comes straight out of the box. But if you also have an Info Asset Manager, Manager license, you can run both products together side by side and be able to edit um, data and, and work fully with, with both products side by side. So I'm going to be working with an SQL um, uh, and it's a, a tracing SQL. And once we've carried out a trace, we're going to do something useful with, with that selection. So let me start off by showing you um, the, the, the SQL in action. Um, and this will work off a selection. I need to select a, a node and then run the SQL. So I'm gonna select a node, which I've got a selection list here. I'm just gonna drag and drop that onto my Info Asset Manager collection network, which I have open on the left-hand side here. On my right, I've got my InfoWorks ICM model. Um, the background shows that they're both um, the, the same, uh, the same um, network, the same catchment. I'm going to remove that background. Um, it kind of gets in the way a little bit. So let me just remove that background, um, and we're left with um, the, 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 the networks themselves. And once I've dragged and dropped my selection network, I can see that selected on my um, asset network. One great thing uh, when you're running both products together is you can also drag the asset management collection network onto the model. And there it is in the background. And hey ho, the selected um, asset node is also selected in that background network. So let's now take a look at the tracing tool. So the tracing tool, um, the tracing query, um, I'm going to sort of drag and drop that onto the collection network, and it pops up this um, dialog box. Um, the, the dialog box is generated from code um, within that SQL. Um, I'll, I'll try and break that down for you in a bit. And it's, um, I can design this uh, for to suit my needs. In this case, I just want to give myself an option whether to trace upstream or downstream and to sort of go uh, for a set number of links in the direction I pick. So let's begin by going upstream and I want to select, let's say, 20 pipes upstream. Once I click on OK, I see that execute. And hey presto, there's my selection made on my collection network. And because I've got that collection network on as a background, it's also selected in the background of my model. Now let's lose that. Let's um, recenter here. I've kind of moved it. Um, let's lose that selection. 
and I'm going to open this up for you just to take a look at the code and we'll try and break that down a little bit. Okay, so the dialog box is, is generated by these four lines and I'll come and explain a little bit more about this in a bit. So um, one of the lines in that dialog box, we saw that it prompted me for a direction and that's generated by this line. It's a prompt line. Like I said, I will come onto uh, the, the exact um, mechanics of this shortly, but it looks to a what's called a list variable that I've defined up here. Depending on that selection of direction and after I've clicked OK, so the query, once I've sort of execute it, we'll run through these lines and we'll stop at prompt display. That's when it generates the dialog box and it hangs and it awaits for the user to interact with that dialog box. The user will then enter the values um, of their preference. Once they hit OK, the rest of the query is executed. And we'll see that there are two similar um, blocks of code. There is this block and this block. So this, uh, each block is executed depending on which option is selected in the terms of direction. So if upstream is selected, it will run through this block, else it runs through this block. So if downstream is selected, it will then run through here. And then we finish. But after this, after this um, end, we can add to this to, to make um, the query useful. Okay, so we've seen how we can trace upstream. Um, let's do this with multiple nodes as well as one node. It will work with a number of nodes. So I've now got three manholes selected on my asset management. They're also selected on my model as the background network. And I'll run that query again and it will then trace, let's pick upstream again, and we'll pick five this time. We see uh, the links selected in both. Okay, so let's break down the prompt. So prompt um, is uh, generated by a number of uh, SQL lines. We have prompt display. So prompt display will just create a dialog box, not very useful, can't do anything with it. But as we start to add lines, so for example, I can now add a useful title to that dialog box, which will give me the title up here. Now for the useful bit is when I start to add lines. So prompt line will generate a line. So the user might want to enter um, you know, numerical values, string values, they might want to enter dates, they might have ranges uh, and so on. So here's an example of um, where I'm creating a, a, uh, a line where the user is able to enter a number. Okay, so I can type in any number. And generating two lines, so that's now two prompt lines. One's going to be a string, and this is going to be uh, my list. So upstream or downstream. Okay, so now I'm given this list to pick from, as well as a numeric. In fact, um, there are quite a number of different um, sort of lines and and, um, and uh, commands uh, that we can pick from. So when I hit apply, I, it, they can be strings. So hello world. And then I can enter numerical values as integers or floats. I can uh, select from a list. Here we have uh, a list of, uh, if any of you are familiar with uh, the Pixar minions, these are minion names from so Pig Kevin, everyone's favorite. Um, why, are they, why are they all men, by the way, these minions? No women. Um, so we pick a date, um, any date, uh, a month. We can even browse to a folder using uh, the, the SQLs or pick a file. We can make it Boolean or we can choose a range, right? So um, 10 minimum, 20 maximum, just pick any number. And in this case, I've actually gone beyond the prompt display to generate a table um, very similar to ones that um, Nikki 
uh, did. So I'm going to just take the, the, the inputs that I've entered and push those out into a table. Here are uh, the values that I picked and uh, now output in a table. So once uh, we enter um, after the prompt display, we can add code uh, to make to make uh, uh, the, the query and the input do, do some work for us. So as I move on, um, I want to uh, bring on a theme here. So this is my asset network. Um, I've got the nodes and pipes showing, but in this network, I also have some CCTV surveys. I zoom in, these are the CCTV surveys associated um, with a pipe. I can click on any of these and it will then jump to my CCTV survey, the defect. And uh, I can, if I had any video associated with this, I'd be able to replay that at this location. So my CCTV is viewable both on the, um, on, on the model, uh, sorry, on the collection network for the asset management, but also on the InfoWorks ICM model. Let me just recenter this. Okay, so now what I'm the next query that I'm going to do is to expand on this. Uh, what I want to do is I want to um, trace upstream uh, from those three points. So here they are selected again, and I want to um, select the CCTV surveys that are that are um, in my selected of my selected pipes. So as I drag that on, again, I set my direction. I'm gonna go upstream again, and I pick my five links, click on OK, and presto. So now this, the query has traced upstream. It's selected the pipes and the nodes, and then I've selected the associated CCTV surveys with those pipes, and then I've simply um, uh, decided to switch off uh, or deselect. I deselect my nodes and the pipes that were selected to leave behind only the CCTV surveys. Okay, so going beyond uh, this, um, I can, um, from those CCTV, TV surveys, I might want to pull out some information. Okay, so again, let's do this. Let's recenter my network. And again, I'm going to highlight my nodes. And again, it's going to be that same query. And I'm going to go beyond um, the fact that I've selected my CCTV surveys, I deselect my nodes and pipes. But then I create a table. So this is a this is the the code to create the table. I'm going to uh, from those mm, from the CCTV surveys that remain selected. Um, I'm going to pick any that are current, and I also want to pick out um, those that contain uh, defect codes that have a structural score of four and above. Okay. So let me apply that. Um, again, I select uh, the direction that I'm going to go. Uh, now I'm going to select the links. Again, I pick the number five. Um, it does its thing. The CCTVs are, uh, are selected just as before. But in this instance, I've also, again, pulled out the, the, the survey. Um, when that survey was carried out, these are all quite old, carried out in uh, 2011 and 2012. And then um, the, 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 uh, the structural score of, of the worst, uh, the worst grade structural scores. So yes, there are a number that have a structural score of five and those that are four. So again, as I think Nikki mentioned this, you can order your table. Um, Coming back to the idea that you can also export this out to CSV file. You can bulk export networks to, to CSV file and to shape file, um, uh, as we've mentioned, by right clicking and exporting, right? Both uh, for the asset management, uh, for the asset uh, data and, and the model. But 
SQLs are able to push out these tables to CSV. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is uh, run this one more time. Um, it's going to um, select, um, create the table, but also select that the pipes that have these um, bad condition grades. So once again, I select my nodes and I run this one more time. And let's go upstream, pick five. So it goes ahead, oops, goes ahead, it goes ahead, um, creates that table. It selected those CCTV surveys and it has selected the pipes that are associated with the CCTV uh, surveys that are in bad condition. Okay, note that these are also uh, selected in the underlying background network that I've dragged and dropped onto my ICM model. Okay, so the last query that I'm going to run, I've tagged these pipes that are selected in my asset network. And what I want to do now is I want to select the model pipes in my model from the selected tagged pipes in my background network. Okay, so in this case, I'm running a, an ICM query. So this ICM query is going to do a spatial um, search on the background asset network. It's going to select the ICM conduits, and then again, it's going to do something useful. In this case, it's going to create a table, uh, um, a, a table of the pipe ID, the pipe shape, the pipe height, the width, the material, and the length. So let me just do that for you. I'm just going to drag and drop that now onto my ICM model. And there you go, it's selected my ICM pipes, my ICM conduits, I beg your pardon, and it's also generated a, a table of those pipes. So the idea is you're able to trace um, in, 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 you could, uh, tracing will, will work on asset management as well as, um, as well as on your ICM network, but um, we, we create a prompt um, where we are able to enter um, some user choices and we can use that to, to, to do something useful. In this case, uh, I'm doing that in, in the trace. Uh, and again, I can, from that selection, I can, uh, again, get it to do some useful work. So you're able to perhaps select all your um, lift stations or your outfalls uh, in a network, trace upstream, and um, if, if you're running, you might want to check where you've got a, a, a CCTV that has a blockage or a, a CCTV survey that has a collapsed pipe or that has many incidents of blockages uh, and, and create reports from that. Um, Yep, you can also use those to, to pull information out from your background network in InfoWorks ICM and even update your model from that. Okay, I think that's bringing me up to, to the end of what I wanted to show. So it's back across to Tim. Tim, take it away. Yeah, perfect. I think um, I, we're at about the hour here. So I think we've got uh -huh. maybe a couple questions here. Um, or really just one and then I guess something to mention for everybody. Um, Nikki, I think you answered this in the chat, but just to have it on the recording, what would be the alternative method to using the SQL query for performing the same kind of trace Idris you were showing earlier? Is this possible to do without using a SQL query? That kind of trace functionality, maybe Idris. Um, that, that you were going over earlier, is that possible to do without a SQL query? Yeah, I was I was muted then. I was actually answering your question, but I realized I was muted. Yeah, so um, both ICM and um, InfoAsset Manager, um, there are inbuilt tracing tools, um, but the tracing tools will, depending on the object, you click on, go all the way upstream until um, 
uh, until there are no more objects to trace or all the way downstream until, again, there are no more um, objects to trace. What you can do um, and what's more interesting when you're sort of building the SQL trace tools is you can get it to trace and you can get that trace to stop when a condition is met. Right, so let's say um, if I, I don't know, so picking something out of it, my top of my head, if you're starting at the top of a catchment at the small pipe, you can sort of trace downstream until, you know, a certain pipe size is met. Mm -hmm. Or vice versa, if you start at a large diameter pipe, you can sort of trace all the way upstream and stop when a, a certain um, pipe diameter is met or um, a pipe within, within a certain structural condition or material. Or you can then also get it to do useful stuff like um, in, in the asset management, you have um, the possibility to keep um, you know, parcels with population in them. As you do that trace, you can have in the background running um, the query is updating the pipes with the number of um, cumulative customers um, that, that, are, that are sort of, uh, or, or parcels, properties that, mm -hmm. that are, that are, um, that are feeding that pipe, right? So you can do some really interesting stuff with SQL. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thanks again, Idris. Thanks, Nikki. Uh, I think that was super helpful. We got a lot of, um, a lot of questions, a lot of engagement. Thank you to all 200 of you who joined. And if any of you all joining have an, a presentation or want to show off your water work in the future, uh, please do let us know here at Invise. Uh, we love showing off the, the different uh, things we think are pretty interesting and neat and helpful to you all, but uh, happy to host your stories as well. Um, thanks, everybody, and have a great rest of your week. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Take care. Bye, everybody.